Good day, students. Uh, welcome to part three of the other two trig regions uh, exam for January 2013. On um, this installment, we're going to be going over questions 11 through 15. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question 11. All right, so in question 11, it says if sine A is 1 over 3, what is the value of cosine 2A? So if you refer to your reference sheets, there's a formula for the, the double angle identities for cosine. And if you have it memorized, you can just pull it from memory. I'm going to call that uh, cosine 2A is. There are three, three variations uh, for the double angle identity for cosine. Well, the one that's dependent on only sine is the 1 minus 2 sine square A variation. Okay? So you have to be selective when using uh, the double angle identities for cosine. You don't want to do more work than is necessary. Okay? Since you have only sine, we're using the formula that has only sine. All right? So what I'm going to do is plug in this sine value into this um, expression right here, and then we'll simplify it for the value of cosine uh, 2a. All right, so we're going to have 1. So cosine 2a is going to be uh, 1 minus 2 uh, times 1 third square. Okay? All right. Now, when you square 1 third, we're going to square the numerator and the denominator. Okay? So we're going to have 1 minus 2. If you square 1 third, you're going to get 1 over 9. Okay? So that's what you have. Um, all right, so what uh, we'll do now is we basically use the proper order of operations to simplify this expression. Okay? So we'll multiply first before we subtract. So we have 1 over. Imagine this to have been 2 over 1. So we'll multiply the numerators and the denominators. That's how you multiply fractions. So we have 2 over 9. Now, to subtract 2 9 from 1, we have to express this 1 as a number with the denominator of 9. All right, we'll find the LCD. So, express 1 as 1 over 1. The LCD of 1 and 9 is 9, so I need to convert this denominator to a 9. To do that, I must multiply the top and the bottom by 9. So, that yields uh, 9 over 9 minus 2 over 9, which equals 7 over 9. So, you can clearly see that our answer is option number four okay let's move on to question 11, uh, 12 it says in the interval zero less than or equal to x x less than 360 degrees tan x is undefined when x equals so what value of tan um uh, is undefined in this on this uh, domain interval all right so to do this is good to know um your quotient identities for tan and also what the graph of your parent trig functions are, okay? So tan, tan x, can be expressed as sine x over cosine x, okay? What causes a function to be undefined whenever the denominator is zero? So anytime this denominator function cosine x is zero, tan will be undefined, all right? So we're going to focus our attention on the function in the denominator of this tan x expressed as a rational function. And then we'll see where it cuts the x-axis when it's equal to zero. And those will be the values where tan will actually be undefined. So our attention now is going to focus on cosine. All right? Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to sketch the graph of cosine from zero to 360. It is really helpful for you to know, to know how the cosine graph looks like uh, so you can easily uh, use it to solve uh, very complex problems. All right? So that goes my coordinate system. Uh, so when you're graphing the cosine, I want to graph y equals cosine x. Think about the cosine function as a cup. Okay, it looks something like this. That's one, that's what the cosine looks like. And then the sine is kind of like an S. Alright? Okay, so I'm going to be graphing the cosine function. Uh, so it's let's see this is we're going from 0 to 360, so we'll break it into four quadrants. 90, 180, um, 270 and then 360. Okay, so this is 360. This is 180. Basically, your, your axis. Okay, cosine starts from the maximum and it's kind of behaved like a cup. Goes like that through there, through there, through there, and then all the way there. So it makes an open circle, make it a closed circle. This is not a perfect graph, it's just a sketch. Okay, all right, so anytime this cosine curve cuts the x axis or equals to zero, then we have a tan is going to be undefined. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this situation. Let me fix this graph a little bit. It's a little bit too high over there. So where does cosine 
So what angular value does cosine cut the x-axis? It cuts the x-axis at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So guess what? Tan is undefined when x equals 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So I can clearly see that our answer is option number four. All right. If you grab this in your calculator, you notice that um, there are asymptotes on these two lines right here. You have an asymptote here, you have an asymptote here, and you have an asymptote here. Okay. Uh, that's why the graph. If you plot this in your calculator, you have the graph, the weird look of the tan of the tangent curve. Let me just sketch it for you. So the tan curve looks something like this, goes like that, and then on the other side it goes through there, like that. Okay, and then it goes there, and the pattern just basically continues forever. Okay, it goes like that. So this this is a tan curve right here. Okay, y equals tan x. Well, in order to determine where the asymptotes are, you actually have to draw the graph of the denominator trig function and find out where it cuts the x-axis or whenever it's zero. So cosine is zero when x is 90 degrees and 270, thus making tan on the final of those values. All right, so the answer is option number four. All right, let's take a look at question number 13. It says if uh, f, of, f of x equals the square root of nine uh, minus x squared, what is the domain and range? Now, there are two ways of doing this problem. The first one involves identifying uh, the geometrical representation of certain equations, okay? If you have a function of the form f of x equals the square root of a minus x squared, this is automatically a circle, a circle, um, I'm sorry, it's, it's a semicircle, okay? It is one, plus or minus makes a circle, but it's just one sign is a semicircle. It's a semicircle with center at the origin and a radius of, radius of root A, okay? Whatever this is, that, that will be the radius, okay? So if you look at this function we have, if I look at this function f of x equals the square root of nine minus x squared, I can easily use geometry to find the domain and range. If I look at this, this is the function of the graph of a semicircle with center at the origin, zero, zero, and the radius of the square root of nine, which is three, okay? So if I can sketch this graph, then I can easily determine what the domain and range are. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to sketch uh, a semicircle real quick. All right, so let's uh, draw a coordinate system. Uh, so let's see. Close it. So draw a coordinate system, and then I'm going to sketch this graph. Okay, so this is my y-axis and so my x-axis. The center is on the origin, and the radius is 3. It's going to be upper semicircle. If it were negative right here, then it would be the lower semicircle. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 3 in this direction, 3 units up, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, this is negative 3, this is 3. So this is a graph of the function, something like this. Part of my semicircle is not perfect by any measure. Oh, that is terrible. Right, let's get, try again. So something like this. Okay, you get the gist. So this is supposed to be a semicircle. All right. Okay, let me fix this real quick. Okay, I just cheated. I use a computer to generate the semicircle. Anyway, now this is negative three, and this is three, and going up is three. Okay, semicircle radius three. Oh, and then the equation of this graph is basically uh, f of x equals the square root of nine minus x squared. All right. So we also find the domain and the range. The domain is the how wide the graph is, the uh, horizontal spread of the graph, and the range is the uh, vertical spread of the graph. Okay, so if we want to determine the domain. How far to the left can you go? You can go as far as negative three. So let's write this domain. Domain is going from negative three all the way to three. Okay. So if you look here, the only answer that satisfies that requirement is option one. So we can just conclude that the answer is option one. All right, I want to determine what the range is. Uh, what is the vertical span of your graph? It goes as low as zero, from zero all the way to three. So it's going to be zero is less than or equal to x, or y, sorry, and y is less than or equal to three. And that will be your range, okay? 
All right, so that goes your domain and there goes your range. Um, so this is one method of doing it. Uh, let me show you another way of doing this without using geometry. So let's assume that you didn't, you didn't know, uh, you don't know your geometry, okay? So to do that, you just need to remember what causes a function to be undefined. What causes a radical function to be undefined? All right, we have f of x equals the square root of 9 minus x squared. So the square root of uh, negative numbers results in unreal results, okay? So we're looking at the real graph on the real coordinate system plane, coordinate system, then we need to have real uh, output values and also real in valid input values to generate real output values, okay? So the radicand must be greater than or equal to zero or else we have unreal results which we cannot graph. So the restriction on the input of this requires that the radicand 9 minus x squared be greater than or equal to zero. So we solve this, it will tell us what the domain is and we can figure out the answer from there. So how do we solve this? Subtract 9, get rid of the minus and the square. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Subtract 9 from both sides. And then you have negative x squared, so greater than or equal to negative 9. Divide both sides by negative 1, you have x squared, so that's going to equal to 9. Now note, anytime you divide an, uh, an inequality by negative, the inequality symbol flips, okay? If you switch the signs, divide and multiply by negative, this inequality sign changes. All right, so to get rid of this square, we're going to take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of a square, uh, you're going to be left with the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3. Okay? So to solve this, we just express it using a sandwich notation. You're going to have uh, negative 3 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 3. And there goes your domain. And uh, that is sufficient to have us conclude that our answer is option number 1. All right? Okay. Now let's move on to question 14. Question 14 is pretty straightforward. Uh, but it's easy to mess that up if you don't, if you're not careful with your signs. Uh, so it says, um, one, when x square root plus 3x minus 4 is subtracted from x to the third plus 3x square minus 2x, the difference is, so we're subtracting this from that. So in essence, what we're doing is we have this expression, x to the third plus 3x squared minus 2x, and we're subtracting x squared plus 3x minus 4. Okay, notice how I lined up the terms with like degrees, so it's easy to compute. Okay, so before I subtract, I'll, I'll like to distribute this minus so I can uh, simplify it easily. So we have, bring just bring the top down. We have uh, x to the third plus 3x squared minus 2x. And when I distribute this minus to all three terms, the signs change to the opposite. Minus x squared minus 3x plus 4. Okay? Now that we've distributed the minus, we just combine the two polynomials, and that will be our final result. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and do it. So we have uh, x to the third. 3x, imagine that there's a 1 here, okay? So plus 3 minus 1 is going to be uh, positive 2x squared. Minus 2x minus 3x is minus 5x plus 4. So let's see, our answer is option number 1. All right, so there you have it. x to the third plus 2x minus 5x plus 4. Okay, let's move on to question uh, 15. Question 15 says, in the diagram below, the length of the line segment <clears throat> is equal to the, ex uh, the, the length of which line segment is equal to the exact value of sine theta. All right, sine theta of this triangle right here. So let's see, if this is the angle, what can we say about this triangle right here? Well, if I want to find sine of this angle, I need to make use of the trig ratio, right? The right triangle trig ratio, so katoa. So Katoa, we all know what this is. Trig ratio, sine is opposite of a hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent of a hypotenuse, tan is opposite of adjacent. We're using so in this case. What does so mean? It basically means that sine theta 
is equal to the opposite of the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Okay? So if I know what the opposite and hypotenuse are in this triangle, then I'm good to go. So this is the reference angle, the side opposite the angle, guess what? That is called the opposite. So this side right here is your opposite. Okay? And since this is a 90 degree angle, the side opposite the 90 degree angle is your hypotenuse. Okay? So in this problem, sine theta is opposite, which is segment TS, over the hypotenuse, which is OT. Okay? So let's see, we don't have TS over OT here. So what we're going to do is basically see if we can determine the length of one of these measures. Now what kind of circle is this if we examine it? You notice that you're going one unit in all directions. So what does that tell you about this circle? This is your unit circle. Okay, what on earth is a unit circle? It's a circle that has a radius of 1, r equals 1. Okay, so that means at any point in this circle, if you go from the circumference to the center, it's going to be one unit long. So what does that tell me about the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is the radius, right? It's one of the radius. Uh, so um, OT, segment OT has a length of 1. Okay, so we can apply that to this ratio we have here. So it's going to be side TS over OT. OT is 1. TS over 1 is simply TS. All right, so we can clearly see that our answer is option number 2. So there you have it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here so you can get updates on the subsequent installments of this uh, review series. Uh, and also, you can um, post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. And click like if you liked it. More videos can be found on mapdoserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.